Welcome to Space Time with Dave. I am Dave, and today is my Deep Sky Stacker tutorial for uh, doing stacking of your Deep Sky astrophotography images. Um, Deep Sky Stacker is um, great freeware. That work does a pretty good, uh, pretty good job. Um, I like to use it because it's a little bit simpler than uh, PixInsight for uh, for doing stacking and kind of uh, much much faster, really. Um, PixInsight is definitely superior, offers you greater control throughout the process, um, but generally I find Deep Sky Stacker does a pretty good job. So before we get started, um, need to make a note that when you download Deep Sky Stacker, when you go to the website, don't download this version, you want the latest version here, 3.3.4. Um, uh, one of the common issues we see online is people say, oh, my Deep Sky Stacker won't read the files from my camera, and that's because they're using an older version. You need to use this newer version here. Um, so uh, a little less uh, a little less obvious of a download link to click on, but make sure you're running 3.3.4 uh, download here. Okay, so let's go back to Deep Sky Stacker and take a look. So, uh, first thing we need to do is add our files. And so, I like to uh, drag and drop files in here. So, I'm going to stack my uh, my M20 image. And so, here's my CR2 files, all my raw files from the camera. And I'm just going to drag them in there. And it's going to ask me what type of frames they are. And these are light frames, so add 20 light frames, okay. So now they're on my list down here, and see I have 20 light frames, and if I click one, it'll load. And there it is. So it uh, doesn't look like a whole lot right now, but that's okay. Um, you can you know click through and review them if you want, but I usually review them uh, using Windows Explorer. So um, there are my light frames, so now I'm gonna add, um, my flats. I have a few um, flats here. So um, normally, uh, uh, when I first shot these, I only had a few, but now I do uh, 30 flat frames instead of 10. Um, but I have a, a little bit different process for flats. But but these will work with this image, and this is the uh, the same image and, and stacking process that I used in my uh, the file in my PixInsight tutorial, which I will uh, link to. So my flats are in there, and um, now if I was going to use uh, bias or uh, dark frames, I would add those in the same way, but I'm not because um, the Canon uh, 7D Mark II doesn't require them. Most modern DSLRs don't, so i um, not going to use dark or, um, or bias frames. So um, just light frames and flat frames here. Um, okay, so those are in there. So um, what you want to do is hit check all, make sure they're all checked. Um, and then we want to register checked pictures. Um, in the uh, register settings, I'm going to have it select 100%. I'm going to have to use all of the images because I've already manually gone through and looked at them. Um, if you're not confident, you know, in how good your light frames are, you might want to do uh, 80 or 90 percent. Um, so let's take a look at the stacking parameters. Um, result here, we're just going to use standard mode because it's just a, a standard picture. If you're doing a mosaic, you would do a mosaic mode, but we're not. So standard mode um, and leave these things default. Uh, the lights here for the stacking mode and your light frames um, depends on how many you have. If you've got more than eight or so, um, which you're going to want, you're going to want, you know, at least a, an hour of data, um, then you're going to want to use Kappa Sigma clipping. Um, if you have less than that, then use average or median. Um, uh, Kappa Sigma clipping is great because that will remove, uh, it will remove hot pixels and it will also remove um, airplane or satellite streaks that are, you know, if you have an, a, a one exposure, one subframe with a with a big satellite streak through it, um, Kappa Sigma clipping will will remove that for you. Um, flats, leave it at medium, and uh, alignment automatic, and these settings just leave it all as default, 
And uh, very important, the output tab that you will create an output file, obviously, but uh, the output location is very important. So I've got it set to create output lo output file in the folder of the reference frame, which is going to be um, back here, M20. So it's going to create uh, and th th save the output file in this directory. If uh, if you don't have a directory selected or um, it, it, it's set to uh, um, uh, a, a different folder for some reason that doesn't exist. Uh, it'll go through all the stacking process and then you'll get nothing. And you go, what happened? Well, it didn't have an output location. So make sure that that is set or manually create, uh, you know, an output file. But this will work work for now. So that's important. Okay, advanced settings. And here we need to compute the um, uh, number of detected stars. So I'll just leave it at 80% uh, and see what it does. So what you're looking for here is kind of a minimum value, minimum of 100 stars that it's going to use to align the images. Um, and so in this image, it detected 1300. Um, so what we can do is increase that and run it again. And eventually, the threshold is going to be so high, it's not going to find any stars. So once you kind of find that point, um, go there and then back it down. So at 94%, it detected zero stars, so try 90%. And um, uh, so the star detection threshold is one of the areas you can use to troubleshoot if the stacking doesn't quite work right, if the images are kind of uh, not aligned properly, or you'll get like a weird blurring in a corner or something like that. Um, come back and redo your stacking with a uh, lower detection threshold so it picks out more stars um, but he, for uh, this image 960 should should work fine so we'll hit okay and um, this gives you a preview let you know it's going to go on you've got total exposure of an hour and 40 minutes so that looks good and tells you how much space it's going to use so if you've got limited drive space that could uh, create an issue and hit okay and so now it's going to take a little while and so go grab yourself a a beer or something and come on back okay so I got a few beers in me and my image is done stacking so there it is and um, it doesn't look very impressive, you know, when it, when it loads in here. You get all this, you know, the colors aren't calibrated right. And so um, this one is showing kind of white. Um, sometimes they show orange, reddish, or, or green. And that's a common, uh, a common question we see a lot, too. People say, I stacked my images and now it looks green. You know, what's going on? And so you can see the, the histogram here, are the, the color channels are are way out of balance and that's okay it's a raw file so it really doesn't matter what the what the how the color channels are balanced because we're gonna we're gonna fix that um, in uh, well, like with the first part part of our our processing so um, the main thing to look for is that you know there's not streaking that it's properly aligned and um, so we can like you know if I load up one of my subframes uh, here you can kind of see um, uh, I guess you can't really can't really see much difference in there yet but uh, once we get it stacked you will so um, so you can adjust the um, the histogram here in deep sky stacker I, I, I recommend you don't do that I think it's best to do all of your processing in one in one image so uh, all I'm gonna do is save picture to file and it asked me where I want to save it, so I'm gonna I have my external drive here, and usually I just save it back in the the folder, and so you can see I stacked this a couple of times, so I'll just call this like number three, and you want to save it as a 32 bits uh, fit image, and under options here do not apply adjustments to the saved image so um, we're gonna do all the adjustments 
later on. Okay, so that saves. And if I look back over here, so there's the file I just made. And um, let's go ahead and load up PixInsight. I guess I could have had this preloaded before. And that takes just a second to load up here. And right, let's. Uh, so here we'll get our a good view of what it looks like. So there it is. There's my stacked image, and so now you can see the yellow. And this is what um, this is what you you expect to see from a from a stacked image, either either a yellow or a green, uh, uh, you know, color cast to it. And that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna calibrate that later and make it look nice. So um, there it is. Uh, Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, program to use um, much simpler than than stacking in Pix and Sight. Pix and Sight definitely is superior and gives you you know like I said gives you control over the over the whole process um, each step of the way. But man, it can be quite time consuming and um, uh, not necessarily um, not really necessary for uh, a lot of these um, uh, DSLR images. You know, for your narrow band or your your monochrome cameras. We should be multiple color channels, um, you know, more necessary. But um, uh, for for getting started, for starting out, um, definitely I would use Deep Sky Stacker. It's free and uh, fairly easy to use. So all right, thank you uh, guys for watching. If, uh, if this was helpful, let me know. Throw a throw a comment uh, down below if you have any questions. If there's something I missed that you'd like me to go over. Um, uh, let me know, and uh, maybe you have some suggestions for better ways of, uh, of doing this that I don't know, and uh, I would always love to uh, have more information. So thanks, everyone, and have a great day.